since you've done actual like movie trailers and stuff, is it weird to put you on the spot and like test your skill? Like, no, yeah. I might need a little. Is this level? Yeah, this level's good. That good? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. You're listening to a Chatter of Fact with Robbie Celestin and today's guest Domingo Castillo. That is amazing. I'm uh, watching you do it, but seeing it how it comes out of your mouth, it's 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 an epic voice you have. And you know what's funny is I've heard you do it on gigs. We're rolling, by the way. Yeah, I know. I Folks, you are listening to a chatter. In <laughs> fact, as always, uh, these are not interviews; they are conversations. And the man, the myth, just uh, your voice is becoming a myth. You probably don't realize it, but it is. Um, so we have Domingo here, and it, we're going to find out so many things. He's in the world of, um, of the corporate band life, as I am. We work for the uh, same company. He's one of the most maybe inspirational band leaders I've seen. He's incredibly, incredibly organized, super talented as a guitarist, but also as a singer. You could front a band if you wanted to because you have that kind of voice. But um, the meticulous nature of how Domingo runs his camp is of interest to me, and it's, and it's been very helpful to me over the years. So we're going to, we're going to talk about how you kind of keep that together, but also so how you move on from life in the, in the arts and within uh, kind of your heart and your brain and your wallet all shaking hands at the same time because if at all possible, you want all of those components to come together, right? That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. And to boot, he happens to be a voiceover guy, as you've heard. And if that sounded strangely familiar to some of you crossover fans, the new show I launched, Strange You, Strange Me, Domingo was gracious enough to slap his voice onto that intro and outro to make it extra cool. So, hey, man. Thanks for being here. It's good to be here. I've heard the show. Um, uh, and, and I'll admit, I, I said this off the bat, that one of the reasons why I agreed to do this is because uh, it, it is not in my comfort zone to do this. Um, I think I've been on two podcasts in, in, in my experience. And so uh, I believe in getting out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Um, and it occurred to me when I do voiceovers, I don't wear headphones. So as we have this conversation, I'm putting my headphones down. There you because go. It's just two guys talking. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, and I can hear you right here. So this is good. There's no call in. There's no sound effects. So wonderful. Hands off. As you say, um, and hands off as well, just in case uh, you were feeling handsy. (laughs) (laughs) Um, This is great because as you reference that stuff, sound effects and things, I I failed to mention that you worked in Chicago radio too. I did. Yeah. Living here in in Chicagoland my whole life. um, I I worked nearly two decades at this, what was the smooth jazz station, WNUA. I think now it's a country station, uh-huh. but um, I, I started as an intern in my uh, early mid twenties, and and I I was there for I, right up to the last day before they uh, flipped format. It was a great experience. Did, did, was that something that did you walk in as a personality first, or were you doing producing work first? <laughs> I, I walked in as the lowest guy that as an intern. Okay. As the, as the lowest person there, um, just a uh, 16-week internship program, uh, interning in different departments, uh, meeting r- really great people, and um, my internship ended, and, and ultimately they hired me, uh, again, as the lowest person now on payroll, but I started at the bottom. I started working fries. And <laughs> so <laughs> this is, What's awesome, though, is that when I start, first started working with you, just when you would do... Um, any kind of intros on the mic or talking on the mic, you'd sometimes get into this kind of lower voice sound. It was kind of a big, broad, bassy sound. And you already kind of naturally have that a little... Well, no, a little bit when you get into certain modes. But you also have this kind of pleasant speaking voice. There's there's, such a difference. There's there's the voice you use when you're asking for permission, which kind of goes up. (laughs) <laughs> you know, and then there's the voice when when it's time to make an announcement for let's please take our seats and 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 that kind of thing. So. Well, as band leader, <laughs> um, you and I have to work with so many different personalities, and I think you also use the um, almost asking for position tone when you're trying to make sure you can steer something where it needs to go without. Um, angering or offending <laughs> uh, you know what could sometimes be difficult clients i've heard that you know with from you too like well you know this might be a good option if you don't mind maybe we can mm. try it this way could we try it? and you, oh, i've heard you do it with a question almost you know, maybe we could try it this way <laughs> <laughs> i guess i that's that's true i guess i have done and that. i watched you do it and I, I i see it and i just feel like oh this is brilliant this dude is totally steering the ship he's <laughs> he's, he's angling this not only where he wants it to be but where it needs to be to be successful for the night so i've seen you do that hmm. I, I, it's, I think it's just from experience it's not about 
the way I, I want it to go. I mean, you and I have done hundreds of weddings yeah. and, and we see how things can kind of get off course if we don't just guide them a little bit. And ultimately the, the client is happy. I mean, they, they want us to be able to play as long as possible. Um, and so little, every little effort that we can make to kind of keep things running on time, uh, I think they appreciate it in, in, at the end of the day. And it's just weird because I've had so many great players and singers on here and you're a talented individual because in order to do what we do at the level that we're doing it, you, you, you better be good mm-hmm. and, and that's fine. But I don't get to have people um, in your position on the mic often as far as the band leader position goes. And I'm yeah. really fascinated by that and I want to talk about that and share that with people because there's so many great players and singers that come up and they do a thing and maybe they end up accidentally in charge of their group um, or maybe they're placed in charge of the group. But navigating and finding a way to to keep the group successful and on point and to do all the things that are needed on and off the stage, that's a whole thing that I've never covered on the show before. And I'm telling you, I'm not (laughs) blowing smoke, man. You are one of the best I'd ever seen. I heard about it. I heard about your efficiency (laughs) when I came into the company. So this monstrous company, and you you guys somewhat know about it if you've listened to the show before, but you know they were they started out as they started out as this one very successful Chicago band, Maggie Speaks, became so successful they needed to start a second one spoken for, and that one was Domingo. You know, so I came around when they needed a third band, but yeah, I heard when I came into the company about how efficient you were, mm-hmm. and then I got to experience some of it, and whether we were in a band leader meeting or just talking off the cuff or even just hearing word on the street you know there, there were these <laughs> things where the they street. would say well hey you know domingo's done this thing i thought oh that's that's an interesting thing to do and and i got to the point where i was really learning a lot from you even if it wasn't directly but where did that come from because you come into this group and i'm assuming when you first joined you weren't made band leader where you were you first came in as a member or did they automatically say you're in and you're band leader uh, there were actually... The, oh, you know, without the headphones, you're swaying a little uh, bit. I'll need you to... <laughs> yeah, I'm in. No, I'm in. Um, yeah, when it's time to speak, step up. Uh, so here I am. Uh, the way my band started, Spoken For, it was actually myself and the original drummer. Uh-huh. We were um, kind of appointed as co-band leaders. So it was it was myself and another person. Oh. And, and then slowly it kind of... More responsibility started to come my way, and it became obvious that maybe I might be... I don't want to say better suited, but it, for whatever reason, it just started to become, uh, I am now more the band leader. And um, and it worked out well because uh, our first drummer, uh, it wasn't a, a great fit for him. And so uh, he went on to other things. But the current drummer that I have now has, has been with me for uh, 13 years now. He's the second longest running person in the group. So so that ended up being a good fit. But, but no, they didn't initially bring me on as band leader. It was actually going to be going to be two people because they they weren't necessarily sure which way that was going to go okay yeah that's interesting when it went so when they um formed our group they had the drummer who was also a uh, owner of the company and the drummer for the flagship band he drummed for us for the that's first right. month and then our drummer who was brand spanking new went with the flagship band so that drummer got to see how you know the flagship band and the machine is, is running as a band mm-hmm but then uh, the drummer that came with us got to show us as well on hand. He also led those gigs, okay. and we saw by example. And it was very interesting because as he led, he was constantly asking little questions mm. in conversational form. And then you could see, oh, this guy's probing. This guy's looking for the band leader. Oh, so you, you know? weren't brought on as band leader. I was yet. brought in as the lead Just singer. Regular. Oh, I didn't know this. And so was everyone else. Oh. And then after, I think, the third gig that he did with us, um, I just tended to stay closer to the dude watching everything because I, I had to do that, a lot of the announcements and stuff with, with for my band oh, before. Okay. I had a leadership role in that. So I really wanted to see how do they lead this this unit. And then finally he just said, listen, the, the leadership job is yours if you want it. It's it's We want you to be the guy. So yeah, they took a different approach. Interesting. Well, it helps that you had had band leader experience beforehand i i I didn't i I didn't lead a band so how did you it's because seriously i had i had a foundation and it was a successful group but then when i came to the company and i saw what they did i learned that i still had more to learn (laughs) but when you came in 
How did how did you attack it? Because oh, I still and, and folks, this wasn't just coming into a bar band. Uh, this gentleman walked into a machine. So he walked into a group that was going to play festivals and bars, but also these high end private parties and you know weddings, corporate events. So it, it's it's a lot to deal with. It's definitely not just your your bar band that you and your buddies are in in the garage. Yet at the same time, you had to have some of that bar band sensibility because you're playing in bars. So how did you handle just the tidal wave of responsibility? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I, I'm reacting because I didn't know that, uh, that you weren't initially the <laughs> band leader and, and that one of the management guys kind of ran your ship for a while. I yeah. thought, how come nobody ran my ship Yeah, no kidding. That's, that's... <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I can't explain why th- that <laughs> happened, but I guess they saw that I had an aptitude and I was able to do this. But that being said, I, I, I made plenty of mistakes. I still screw up pretty good on occasion and um trying to learn from that and uh, I, I guess maybe just my personality is suited to that i'm a pretty mellow guy i, I don't uh, uh I, I try and be patient and understanding and that we're all just kind of people and um yeah i think it, one of the things that that has benefited me well is it, i'm not necessarily the best guitar player or the best singer i've, I've been the guitar player the singer the bass player in in the the band and wow. what has served me the best is people skills uh being able to kind of uh, find middle ground with all the different personalities that we deal with as band leaders or or even the personalities of clients that we deal with and so i think that that's probably the number one thing that has helped me um and and to be a patient person as well i guess is is pretty helpful so yeah, yeah. because barring um you know, let, let's take the most difficult, extreme personalities out of the mix. Because when, when you have a very, very difficult band member uh, who's, who's causing the whole ship to, to almost sink, the only answer, you know, you, you go through different phases and you try to work with a member like that. And, you know, I think we've both had that before. Um, eventually, if nothing changes and it's to the point where all the professionalism is out the window there's dismissal is the only thing that works that's kind of the easy answer how do you deal with just the any bad personalities or difficult personalities that might come to hand or situations that you you know it's not going to tank the gig so you know you know you've got to keep these people around or you have to work with this person because it's their big event How, how do you find yourself handling different personalities you know the what what's your <laughs> it's tricky <laughs> i've complimented you in this because i actually think you have a great uh, ability at at handling uh, the more delicate and tricky personalities um there is advice that i remember hearing which is you 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 pick your battles you know sometimes if something kind of if you see something and you think um, that maybe this needs addressing uh, but then you think boy if i do that if i confront this person or if i bring it up maybe you know maybe i exercise a little flexibility and 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 talk to them later about it or maybe i let a couple of songs go by and and see if this is really something that needs addressing or if this is just a fluke or if this is you know i guess it's a lot of it is just learning about yourself Uh really and uh, again i i contend that you have more kung fu when it comes to (laughs) to dealing with (laughs) tricky personalities i i I, if we traded places i i don't i i don't know that i would do so well but uh, uh I know, it's it's just learning people right. really and and we're we're all we're all flawed i can just say that we're all flawed we're all learning we all just want to do good and 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 <laughs> and get home safely yeah <laughs> and then as i was talking to you right before the mics went on and then i had to shut myself up because i thought it'd be good for the mics we we have such different approaches because every band i'd, I'd ever been in has been so it's they've been such families the, mm-hmm. the whole every group um and and it continues to be that way but lit, you know my father was literally in one of my most successful mm, bands yeah. with me and it just becomes this thing and most of those groups that i worked with they accidentally became super successful but mm. it was always based out of a love for doing it and the beauty of it is there was no ego there was just they loved doing it. They loved being up there doing the True. thing, you yeah. know. So I had that. That was my base, and I kind of brought that personal touch to the professional band world. But I would find myself still being somewhat nurturing and maybe overly giving and taking, you know, uh, building these close friendships. And I think that 
serves me a lot because it allows me to know these people so well that I can cover a few things and hopefully try to help. I, I, I try to help my band even where they have no idea I'm helping. Mm. I'll try to smooth Good. over some things from the office or weird things before it even, I don't want my band to even know about it or a weird client that wants to come into the room and yell at the whole band about something yes. stupid. Yes. I protect my band from that. Yes. I don't want them to know. Oh, you're a good band leader. Yeah. And I'll, I'll walk in. You've probably done this. I'll walk in after maybe being reamed out by a client and that client, I know they're going to be thrilled when the night's over and they're going to be shaking my hand. But in the middle of it, they, sometimes they lose their heads and just reaming me out. And I walk into my band room as they're having dinner and I just try to smile. And, yeah. You know. I think part of our position is to absorb yeah. that kind of stuff. I mean, certainly management above us does the same. Right. They, they I, there was something I learned recently is that you don't complain down. I mean, if you got something to gripe <sighs> about, you, you kind of vent it upward. You don't vent downward to your team. That is brilliant. I think it's in the military. I, I don't remember where I heard this. Oh, but wow. I thought, oh, oh, that makes sense. But I mean, we're human and we need to vent. So yeah. either we vent to our spouses or, or, but management is there to hear that. But, but what you said exactly uh, happens a lot. Uh, sometimes we'll work with clients that are, uh, they expect a degree of performance or, or maybe they're just kind of a little, uh, they require a little bit more attention. And, and, and so if you and I have been in the hot seat before with clients and sometimes uh, we're, we're sitting at our hang table before we go on. And if a client approaches me, I'll, I'll leave the table and I'll encourage them to come out in the hallway. And, and this is actually a phrase I'll use with wedding clients. I, I will literally tell them, I said, if anything, if you need anything, come yell at me. I, I use those words. I say, come yell at me. I invite them to, to bring any kind of, you know, a, a, I'm the one you need to abuse. Yeah, come yeah. bring it to me. You don't have to talk to anyone on my, on my team. And, and then that'll either open the door like, oh, okay. Or they'll, they'll turn it around and say, well, I'm, I'm not going to yell at you. And so then, great. We're <laughs> I'm going to use that. I've so, never used yes, that. Yes, I say, come, if anything's, you can use it with wedding planners yeah. too. Anything uh, goes uh, awry, come um, yell at me. I'm the person. And they typically don't yell. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> That's fantastic though. I'm, I've never used that phrasing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we almost have to put a target on our back. Yes. I feel like we're in, we're in like the weird monster movie or the Godzilla movie. And as Godzilla or the monsters coming toward the band, we're the ones with the flares running like hey over here <laughs> hey me man chase yeah. me <laughs> but, but as band leaders we're also the best suited to handle that kind of um i don't want to say abuse but that kind of experience yeah yeah so if, and and yeah w- from experience we know that it's it's nothing personal they just want their event to go well it's so, tricky for, because with you being in and such a, a wonderful presence for your group but not always being as personal as i as i would be with my groups um uh, again, it, it, it causes me to give, it gives me some insight to where I can try to help and try to help as best I can to navigate a few things, but it also creates a lot of minefields that somebody who doesn't get as personal would get, and, you know, where sometimes uh, that relationship, you know, a, a band member could get really upset with me and, and kind of let me have it in, in the middle of a show because they mm. feel so close to me. And, and, and part of me wants to, to tell anyone that does that, like, hey, come on now, that's not the professional thing, not here, not now, not True. right after the show. Yes. But the other part of me is like, well, we've become such personal friends. That line can get so blurry when you're, in, when you're having an emotional moment and it's your friend. So it, it gets really weird. I'm still trying to figure it out because I thought I had it all balanced a couple of years ago. Like, okay, I've got it figured out. But then you realize it, it causes sometimes more problems that you didn't have before. So now I'm, I'm still, to this day, after so many years of doing this, trying to find my balance. And I guess it's really person to person, isn't it? You know, I can't talk to this person the way I talk to that person or this person, you know, I suppose. Yeah, that's, you know, thinking back, I mean, when, when we, this, my band started 14 years ago, it was just four guys. And it, it helped that we were all pulling our weight. And, and even more so, we would help out in areas that even wasn't expected. And it really developed a, a fellowship, a brotherhood. It just, you know, we're, we're trying to get this job done. I mean, if we're all going to stay late and, and help load the van, then so be it. And and there was a sense of family and, and, and trust. And, and yes, we were all close with each other. I mean, if, if there was time, we would go and uh, get a sandwich together or go a couple of times, maybe we'd uh, make arrangements. Let's let's get to the neighborhood early and we'll go see a movie before the gig. Wow. We've done that a couple of times. But 
Um, now we get older and, and life kind of changes and our priorities shift and, and that's not as possible. But um, yeah, I guess it, 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 it's all the, the personal relationship that you have with your band mates or, or the degree of how personally you want to get with them. I mean, obviously, the people that I've worked with longer, I, 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 I've obviously developed kind of more of a connection. Uh, I know them more personally. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, yeah, I guess it's just kind of finding a happy medium where, where both parties feel like, you know, their, their needs are being met and that it's kind of a, uh, an, an equal thing. <laughs> it's weird, man. I mean, how, how you've you've really found your voice in in that world, and, and it's it. I, I still learn a lot from you. you oh know? well, thanks. I think it, it, so. I heard this a few years ago. It's it's all teaching and learning. It, and this isn't something that I came up with. I, I heard this in life. It's all teaching and learning. We have something to teach each other. We have things to learn from each other. And if you can be open minded and be a perpetual student, I think you'll be okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, certainly. I mean, you and I have been doing band leading for a while now, over a decade, yeah. decade and a half, closer to. And but there's still things that we're learning. It's nuts. <laughs> it's nuts. Yes. You know? Do you still get a charge out of performing to this day, though? After all these years, I do. It's fun. I mean, this is the only musical outlet that I have. I mean, you you are gifted in that you have this band, but you also have your 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 personal band, your original thing. Yeah, you write music. I I, I don't write music. Um, so when I put my guitar away after the gig, I'm I'm not doing a whole lot of musical things. Uh, in addition to this, so so yes, I I'm I'm grateful that I have such a great musical team, uh, and I, I try and remember I try and be mindful of this at every gig that I, I am I am really grateful to be here I'm having a lot of fun um, there will be a day when this personally won't be here for me uh, because that's the way it is with everything nothing lasts forever yeah. there will be a day when this band won't be here or at least maybe I won't be a part of it or maybe I won't be here um, but I'm grateful for being here in this moment and I'm going to enjoy it and 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 that's brought me peace and happiness it's interesting because uh, it, trying to keep that perspective it people might feel like oh why, why are they asking if they are sick of it you know when they do the band thing but mm. what some people don't understand is when you do it at the capacity we're doing it you know we're at that i always call it the middle class or upper middle class of entertainment which is kind of what the show's built on but the thing is, folks, for anybody listening to, it's interesting because we're up there, and some of these gigs are great. You know, I, sometimes we're doing gigs in stadiums, and sometimes you know, I was at Miller Stadium, or you, you, somebody rents out something, and you're you're on these major venues, and it's it's that you get to walk through the walk of of a rock star. You get to go <laughs> through the House of Blues show and and know what it feels like to perform on that stage. You know, I think I think people shouldn't lose perspective of that when they're doing it. You know. But at the same time, all the cool stuff that we do, in the end, still, it, it is a job. And it's a great job. It's better than digging ditches. I prefer it to being in a cubicle or something like that, personally. But at the same time, what I think people don't understand is, after a while, everything is a job. We're still being told over 100 times a year where you have to be and what you have to do. And oftentimes... It's many more hours and miles away than what maybe a nice nine to five in town would give us, you know. So I think it's an important question to ask somebody. Uh, and I think outsiders should maybe give that a, a different line of thought when they're looking at us do the thing like, oh, yeah, but I'll bet I'll bet come gig number 90 <laughs> when they feel more like a truck driver than a performer. They're, they're probably a little worn, too. Yeah. You know, every every gig has their. Pros Every job, everything, right? Yeah, yeah. It's funny. My dad, my dad gave me all these lessons, uh, which is funny because if you just talk to my dad on his couch, you're not going to get many lessons. It's just going to be a, a lot of well, you know, a lot of digression, and you know, similar to me, but more so. Mm. <laughs> and but when it comes to music, he was spot on with just hey, have fun up there, enjoy the moment, enjoy the moment. Who cares what happened before or after? But enjoy that moment when you're up there. You were blessed with yeah. a great musical mentor. Yeah, who See? knew? Yeah, who knew? that's great. I I didn't necessarily have musical uh, uh, siblings or family members. I, I don't know why I was drawn to this, but but uh, nobody. Uh, my dad played a little. Uh, we had one of those kind of wobbly organs, ooh, like that you would get at the mall. He would kind of tinker <laughs> with that. But I, I don't believe he ever learned how to read music. Um, How'd you get the bug? Uh, I 
don't know. Um, when I was 12, I, I found my mom's acoustic guitar in my closet. It was just at the back. I didn't know that it was there. And I said, what is this, mom? And she said, oh, I, I took guitar lessons when I was in college, but it hurts my fingers. I said, can I have this? And she just said, yeah. And so that's how it was just a very inexpensive acoustic guitar, but I didn't know it was in the house. And so I was 12 years old when I started. And, and, and it was great fun to learn how to kind of copy mimic uh, riffs that you hear on the radio so were you self-teaching at first uh, at first but then i found a, a guy uh, in the neighborhood who who had all the led zeppelin albums and who knew <laughs> it was a, more established and uh, and i he was a few years older than me so i think i was 12 and maybe he was 17 or 18 and of course he had no interest in hanging out with a 12 year old but um <laughs> Yeah, I remember uh, hearing an electric guitar for the first time. Uh, I was just a kid, and and I, I just I was just going down the alley, and and I, you know where where he lived. It was just coming through. The window was open, but the the blinds were closed, so I I, I could only hear it. I, I couldn't see it. I've never heard an electric guitar live before. And I thought, what, what is this? <laughs> and so I, I basically tried as much as possible to become friends and hang out with that guy. And it turned into a handful of lessons. Um, but it, it, he was probably the first musical influence in my life because he was somebody who was actually uh, playing guitar. And wow. So, yeah. And then the singing, because you have a great voice. Oh, thanks. See, I don't know where that came from. I mean, I... I, I Played in an original in an original band in high school with some friends. You got to give me the and, name. This is important. Oh, it's not. It's not even around anymore. But it was a names band. are important. Sure. No, I don't know how uh, amusing this would be, but we were called Area Thirty Nine. Why? Uh, because I guess within the hemispheres of your brain, there are different areas which govern different functions. Oh and my Specifically, God. Area Number Thirty Nine governs the creative portion of one's brain. And so <laughs> Wait, that's <laughs> how old were you when you were in this group? Uh, yeah, seventeen, sixteen. Was it like a bunch of seventeen-year-olds and then one forty-year-old with a PhD? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how would you even come to that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the main fella and I. He uh, he was my age. He was sixteen, seventeen. <laughs> And our drummer was a year younger, and our singer were, was a couple years older. Yeah. So what's an interesting fact is, uh, so this was back in high school, and the guitarist, whom I befriended, uh, uh, he later became principal of our high school. Oh wow! <laughs> so <laughs> I just I'm fascinated by the reasoning behind that name, though. Oh yeah, he was a very uh, well read. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so. Yeah. Because, it, you know, we were both kids of the 80s, then, you and sure. I. So yeah. in the 80s, my very first high school band, oh my gosh, it's like it's like you guys were around a computer, and my band was just like hitting rocks on the ground. Okay, what was your band, high school band? Too, thing? too much. Too, too But much. hold on. <laughs> Spelled funny. Yeah. Number two, okay. dash number two much, because in the 80s, why not? You know, okay. there was either a Z added to something nice. or, or a, a lot of the number two, but it, it's just so simple. And then you've got this like deep cognitive reasoning behind uh, yours. Well, I, we didn't really go that far, so uh, I don't know how, how much that, that served us. You put too much work into the name. We're a little too ahead of, yeah. <laughs> a little more in the music, less in the name. Every practice, they're just reading philosophy books. It's, it's weird. And there's no, graphs. It was, a, it, it was a good balance. It was a there good were, balance, though. Yeah, there were intellectuals, and then there were people in our band who enjoyed um, not so much intellectual uh, mm -hmm. entertainment so <laughs> either way geez oh, yeah. so uh, well once to to circle back into into band life then because it is interesting as you're as you're growing into that and and you find yourself at this um very professional level of doing this stuff um and by the way you're amusing i keep talking about how efficient you are and mm. and Folks, seriously, he, you know every turn of every corner. If if, if Domingo advances a group, and I, I guess I'd never even heard the term advance till I got into the company, but you know somebody needs to advance your gig, and by sending out an advance, that's just all of the information, location, mm. timing, where you know, as much as you can give. True. And you give more info and more detailed info than I've ever seen. Yeah, sometimes I wonder if it's if it's too uh, verbose. It you know, is if it should, not. If it should be a little more streamlined, it feels so. like you're being spoiled when you read it you know mm -hmm. so that it's incredibly helpful and it's inspired me it's it's made me try to be more meticulous in certain areas oh, well you know uh, that's good <laughs> but i say all of that and then you have comedic timing and you're hilarious and you and i have one similar little thing uh oh i think on the mic during shows we're able to <laughs> lightly make fun of a person here and there uh -oh. as well as ourselves 
Um, and it's, I think we, we walk the line cause we don't offend anyone, but we have a lot of fun with it. And you're hilarious, man. Oh, well, like thanks. where did that gene come from? Cause yeah, you could almost I, be a comedy dude. Um, yeah, I, I don't know where that comes Funny from. Funny friends? I, 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 there's this debate, w- w- argument that ca- can comedy be taught? Was it taught to me? Was it learned somewhere? I mean, my earliest memories. Let's I re- delve into this. I remember uh, making my parents laugh when I would do uh, impressions of, of whomever we were watching on TV, uh-huh. you know, the 80s, 70s and 80s sitcoms. You know, I would try and, and, and mimic. <laughs> and and I, I remember I had a, a little bit of an aptitude for sounding like whomever we were watching. So it comes from mimicry, I guess, to begin with. Um, and then it's just something you take as, as, as you get older. So. Did you have any crazy or funny friends? I grew up with funny I people. Did. I did. So I, I did have a grade school friend, and I, I would consider him I, at then and, and still now, although we, we are not really in touch. But um, when I was 12, 13, 14, I considered him my comedic equal. He was just as fast as I was, just as silly <laughs> and and... Yeah, and so to be around f- funny uh, people, I, I guess you know, cultivates that spirit. Much like if you hang around with your mus- musician buddies, that that type of energy is just going to get stronger. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> it's it's amazing because you're 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 quick. But I always wondered about that because oh. the funniest people I know still are the folks I grew up with. Okay. Between my brothers and some of my best friends, just whole, I was surrounded by people. And, and, you know, I've, I've been able to make improv and comedy a little part of my life these days. That's good. But to this day, I still think of myself back then. I was the unfunniest one in the room when I was around those guys. They were hilarious. Well, so they say when you're in a band, you want to be the worst musician in the room. Yeah. Because you'll get better through osmosis, through being around these other players who are much better than you. And maybe the same applies to what you just said. You're, you're the least funny person in the room. Well, then you absorb what they do or you step up your game. Or There is nothing yeah. like that, man. To this day, I'll still try. It's very random, but I'll try to jam with someone or go to some kind of jam night where I know the heavy hitters are playing and when you hit one of those places and you're up there I'm, I'm still getting inspired by these players that are mm. doing things that I can't do or hearing something that I've never heard before it's to this day I just think it's so important you uh, know musically or comedically speaking? musically, musically. and okay. comedically okay okay um, the the strange you strange me is putting me in a room with that, that podcast puts me in a room with a professional comedian uh. because I feel like my improv skills or at least my tricks I've kind of hit a ceiling. Okay. I feel like ah, I'm kind of doing the same thing. And I, so I just want to sit in a room and we riff off those subjects, as you know. But I'm doing it with a pro. And I'm just trying to make my muscle have to keep up with That's theirs. That's good. Yeah. And this gets back to what we, I, what I mentioned in the beginning, comfort zone. Yeah. You know, I, I'm 50 years old now. And so now I'm trying to embrace like, okay, comfort zone. I, Robbie asks me, come on, be on my podcast. And I'm, <laughs> my first thing is, no, I'm going to stay home and, and you know play guitar uh but uh, no I, i'm gonna come out here I, I, I don't have a lot of experience doing this and i know that when i leave I'll, I'll i'm i'm already glad that i did this yeah yeah i mean i am kind of a private person in that i'm not necessarily quick to talk about myself but uh so to sit among someone who's going to ask me probing questions like yeah. this it, it's not it's not i it's, just like the fact that you are so laid back right now too but for this being like just completely different and and out of your comfort zone you know you're just you're incredibly relaxed i see it on your face it's weird that you're <laughs> naked i think that's odd there was no need for that but I, you, i'm very method you walked in and you're like you know just everything out of my comfort zone there we go i don't normally sit in a living room <laughs> Without any clothes, but today, today's the day. So, but that's all right, man. You you, you look good. You look fit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the audience starts to wonder: like, is that is that a joke, or is he is he naked? We can let them imagine. You guys just think. imagine, just imagine the overly masculine man just <laughs> flexing his muscles with every <laughs> laugh. Um, well, then I want to get into well. Besides dealing with the personalities of the, of the the staff, and then you know, whether it's your staff or the people in charge, you know, it, it's it's everything. I mean, to this day, you still probably have some person in the crowd who can be a little difficult, and even that's still a dance to this day. And you, you you'd hope that you're at a point where you never have to deal with that, but you know, booze is a funny thing, uh, or who knows what else they're doing out there. But but people get either overly excited about the show. Or maybe they're they're having a little too much because galas are interesting, 
galas are interesting because these people that we're seeing, especially if it's a corporate thing, you know, hey, bless their hearts, they're having fun and they've earned that night. But at the same time, I feel like we're watching a a group of people that don't always get the chance to just be in a room and have free booze mm. and you know dress up and they're great for that first hour but by hour two or three i'm seeing very important or um very professional folks just spout madness <laughs> <laughs> and they're the client i, I would <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know just like a, a well-respected person you talk to them and it's great and then the end of the night when i'm walking out just the compliments are so inappropriately weird, you know. And this is a guy talking to me, and it's just strange, uh, you know. I, I had one guy. Uh, I'm, I'm walking out, and I, I actually did some MC work and then some other work, and, uh, and obviously the band thing. And he was really taken by whatever I did, and it was kind of a handshake earlier on mm-hmm. in the night. You know, man, it was really something. Like, oh, great. And I cut to like three hours later. He's like, I don't know what you do. Mm. I don't know if you're pouring cayenne pepper down your butt, but man, the spice you have up there. And I kept thinking, how does this make sense? Like, so it's not even just, it's, not, it's, it's the most senseless spouting of things that happen. You know, I, I think it, maybe it was my, probably my wife. We, I always tease her about uh, any kind of work galas and stuff because people always talk about the connections you make. Like, oh, I mean, you can really get far if you go to these galas. And as I look at the galas, attending a gala, you should attend it if you just want to have fun, but don't attend it if you think you're going to go further in your career because the only thing that I've noticed as a person like you who's seen a million of these things, the only way you could really get ahead is if you tape record or videotape uh, or video record uh, the crazy shit that these people are saying or doing, and then I suppose blackmail. You can then become uh, VP of the company. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah, you remind me. I think five what? years ago we had a holiday party where one of the board members insisted on stage diving. Oh no! And I think I think our former bass player has that on his on high his stage. Phone. Was it a high stage? Uh, it was enough where it could be dangerous and it made me nervous, but they were the client and I wasn't going to say no. Right. Uh, but I thought, well, this doesn't happen often. And so, but they're having fun and I'm, I'm not going to get in the way of this. But um, yeah, I guess as band leaders, we, we see now. all kinds of things. How did the dive play out? I, I need to hear the uh, end of the dive. Yeah, all, all the uh, did they all catch the, all the subordinates were ready to receive. Oh, good. So, good, good, good. so there was no <laughs> there were no fatalities. Because so. I've seen I I haven't seen too many bad things. I I, I did see a a bride. You know, for a lot of the Jewish weddings, they they do the horror and sure, yeah. the chair thing, yeah, which yeah, always scares me. Scares me. And the last few that I've done, I really stress that we do it at the beginning of the show mm-hmm. because da, 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 sure. da, da, yeah. your bride and groom are up on the chairs, people. And they're just lifting, you know, the, the staff, not the staff, but the, you know, usually the family are lifting them up and down and up and down and they show incredible feats of strength. <laughs> but I always think we have to do this like the, within the first 20 minutes. Oh, sure. I'm not doing this an hour or two. Oh, yeah. Because one time I saw it. I saw, you know, a bunch of drunkards trying to do this and I saw a bride just flip right off and just fall right to the ground, yeah. you know. But she was either really tough or so incredibly intoxicated that she popped up right away like Steve Martin's nice. parenthood after he fell, <laughs> fell off the horse. Just like, Da-da. but I mean, it's weird. You see those things and you just worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, things we see as band leaders. Um, <laughs> I, I'm lucky I have yet to see a bride fall out of a chair during, okay. during that. So, uh, but uh, next Any m- other recollections that... Uh, um. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm unprepared because I didn't think of any. Me uh, neither. I know. I'm trying to like search my brain now. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> we did have a, a drunk guy fall into a drum set once. He wow. He was his date was really into the show. She was kind of dancing to me, and you know, and I, I try to give back as much as I can when someone's in front, and I'm like, okay, I'll play to it. Da 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 da. And at some point he was watching her and he was dancing with her. Mm. But then he kind of gave her a look like, why don't you just go home with him then? You know, okay. and she's like, hey, hey, stop. You know, and, and then he said, no, him. And he pointed so hard at me that he flew toward me yeah. and into the drum set. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Well, and I managed to catch him by the by the belt so that he just hit a few of the oh. symbols and I and I pulled him back and then he was able he was okay and he went off the um uh 
off the stage. And he seemed to be doing well because as I left that night, it looked like he was taking a wonderful nap in the lobby on oh. the couch. <laughs> so, <laughs> but but it was nuts when you when you it's a it's almost a character study. Uh, and it would be I, I want it to be mostly funny, mm. but for any of you guys out there listening, it's 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 tricky because it's really more focused on the job. Because that's where my red light, my, you know, my red flags are up, and I'm, I'm just on extra alert. Like, okay, let's let's make sure we're navigating, make sure we keep people friendly, and similar to, oh wow, do you do this? Similar to when we have tricky clients, if there's an overly excited, possibly intoxicated person, really coming up to the band, I do my best to just beeline it and get there, because I I have a lot of tax, tactics that I try to use. I never try to say hey you're being a jerk and i don't care if they are being a jerk i'm just in there killing them with kindness if people are you know some guy might say you know this song really sucked you know I'm like oh wow good ear you know you're into music are you in a band you know <laughs> and then you're much more diplomatic than yeah I, typically it, they turn it though like if, well yeah you know I, I listen and then they like being complimented and then they walk away shaking my hand so hey, well is this during performance or during the break it's or? a little little bit of, if usually during performance i'm quick and I get them away. Yeah. And then on break, when everyone else gets to take a break, okay. I beeline it to that person to finish the job and compliment, be their buddy, okay. so that when I jump back on stage, they're going to leave me alone. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't get a lot of that during the break, but certainly you and I have seen it during the performance. Yeah. And yeah, if someone crosses the the plane of, of stepping onto our stage, uh-huh. yeah, there's there's no reasoning. I just, I, I, I don't know. Throat punch. You just... <laughs> Just, <laughs> just start quoting the Dalai Lama immediately. <laughs> Be the change, my friend. Oh, it's so peaceful. <laughs> no, no, I, I, no if, they're, if they step on our stage, it just uh, I immediately, that's an outstretched hand, and I just, make, yeah. because it's the safety of, of all of us on stage, and they know they're not supposed to Does be. Does that there. outstretched hand have brass <laughs> knuckles on it? Or it's... It leads to another person that, it, that I assign to remove them. From oh, the I stage, see, okay. But, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, and finding this, I, I'm looking for. I'm, see, you have no cracks, man. I'm looking for that. Man. Oh, I've got plenty. I want of everyone cracks. to Jeez. like listen to this when they're all thinking like he is great. He's great. Oh, wait a minute. Did he say he shivs someone as they're coming on during <laughs> Sweet Caroline? Yeah. No, none of that, huh? Well, we'll get we'll get to your dirt. Okay. I'll, I'll figure it out. You know? <laughs> I'm here. We have someone calling in. I'm like, yeah, you punched me in the face at my wedding. Mm. <laughs> well, aside from that, though, moving from the band world because again, you control. You control the situation better than most I've seen, and I mean that from like beginning to end. Hmm. And, and that's one of the things I really love about you, and that's what's well, made you. you just an, inspire me in many ways. And you're just a good guy. You know, that's that's huge uh, for your your voice, man. Uh, I'm a lead singer, and I'll come uh, on your camp, and I'll sing a song, and then you'll jump up and you'll you'll do you'll do a lead, and you'll do something like September, and I'm supposed to be the lead guy. And the guitar player is singing September just as well, if not better, than I do. And I got to tell you, it's just, it's an amazing thing to hear. I love your voice. And oh, your thanks. range is ridiculous, too. How have you... You were so grounded. How have you not let the ego monster ever get to you? Uh, I, I, I don't know that it's never gotten to me. I think... I, I, or how's it gone now, then? Well, I, I think I'm older and I'm more grounded. And so that type of... Uh, I'm not really susceptible so much to that kind of thing. Um, but, I mean, to step back, you talk about... I, we, you and I have two lead singers in our group, you being one of them. Yeah. And, and so I, I try not to... I actually try not to sing too much because I've got two able-bodied lead singers in, in my group. But when I'm afforded the ability to sing a song or two, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. And, um, yeah, it's just the, the love of performing really I, I i love the music and to be able to i mean a song like any way you want it by journey yeah is it's probably my favorite song to sing and it's 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 one of the most difficult songs for me to sing uh three years ago i, I actually couldn't sing this song maybe four years ago uh-huh. um I, I would start it and then I, I would have this look where i would give one of my other singers where halfway through the song if i'm out of gas I, i'm going to give you this look please take over <laughs> and and but for, for whatever reason there came a summer when i it would be my one song I would sing during a park district and, and I was able to get through it. And I thought, 
well, maybe I'm getting stronger at this. So, uh, but I, I, I don't need to sing that song every gig because again, I've got two able-bodied singers and I don't want to take anything away from them. So, but I, I absolutely enjoy my moments when, when they're allowed. <laughs> yeah, I used to think that just somebody in my position had the ability to kind of lose themselves and, and focus on the ego thing because of being the front person. Uh, but I see it in in every position. It's not. I'm, I'm just in. It, I can I can be befriend someone in another band, and I can go meet them and talk to them, and I'll talk to the guitarist or a bass player or something. It, it surprises me. In, anybody. It could be the keyboardist. Uh, it could be a keyboardist who's kind of like w- way in the back or something, and mm. yet I'll I'll hear this this thing that happens. You know, this is a real, a very geeky geeky example. Uh, and I apologize, but I'm a comic book guy, and uh, yeah. everybody knows that Superman dies when he's exposed to kryptonite, right? Mm. Well, at some point, somebody tried synthesizing that, one of his villains, I don't know who, and it came out red. And when he's exposed to this red kryptonite, he you don't know what it's going to do to him. He doesn't know what it's going to do to him. Sometimes it just makes him a big jerk. Sometimes he turns to stone. It's It's random. And I've noticed that success and attention affects everyone differently and there's no gauge i can see a a very flamboyant person who seems to be really into the attention that they get suddenly get into a situation where there's a ton coming their way and they're totally unfazed and then i could see the most grounded quiet person in the world become an egomaniac and it's it's such a weird i I, and i've seen it every every year i'll see it somewhere and Mm. i don't know you know it's I think I probably had I had to have had something like that with me probably when I was 18 or 19 I think I I had some of that or maybe early 20s when I worked with some great vocalists too and thought like oh wow I'm not the star you know but it surprises me once the attention hits I don't know if you've seen it or I don't know if you remember combating it um we didn't in my original group we didn't see a ton of success in our in our late teens so we didn't really have to combat yeah. that as it as it never happens but but yes you take an average person and you apply a whole lot of attention to them i mean i guess screaming cheering well depending on how well adjusted they are i mean i guess you'll see how they react it's kind of like how alcohol can make a different person come out yeah. of somebody and and maybe it it all depends on how how what kind of person you are to begin with um yeah i, I don't necessarily need the attention uh so you know, I, I was talking to my wife about this the other day um there was a time in my life when i think i worked a lot more i was more aware of my comedic chops because i i kind of wanted to be the person who could walk into a room and and kill it with a one-liner and then be done uh <laughs> I, I don't I don't need to be the funniest person in the room anymore, uh-huh. and, and maybe because I'm just a little older and mellow. I mean, I still have comedic ability. I'm, I'm, maybe I'm not as sharp as I was, you know, in my twenties. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I I'm, I'm pretty happy and 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 at peace with where I am these yeah. days. So I I don't there's there's not a whole lot that could happen to me that would that would significantly shift who I am, I guess. I mean, certainly if, if, if there was a lot of money and here you go, you're all your, your, your bills are paid for the rest of your life. I mean, well, great. Let's, let's be more creative or let's, but right. Yeah. I guess it all boils down to how well grounded you are. And, and you know, you, you've got a, you, you've got a family, you've got a wife and kids, you got a dog, you know, you're going to come home to, and you know, that people screaming at a festival at you, yeah, either way, you're, you're, you're still going to be home and, you know, with your family in two hours. Yeah, so. I do. I do have to go back to my dad though. I think oh, okay. that, that yeah, was yeah. his thing. It, yeah. You know, he, he, he never, ever, I, I was trying to, I was trying to do some self analysis too. And I was wondering about this because I think I get surprised if I meet someone who goes off the rails when they get successful or who just changes a little bit. Um, Cause I always assume like, yeah, I'm, I'm the lead singer in a band. Hmm. So if I'm not an egomaniac, if I'm not that guy, then come on, who do you have to be that guy or girl or whatever, whatever point. it is, you know? And, but I just assume, but I try to like stop myself and think like, well, why, why is it, you know, or did, did is it that I went through that phase? And I, I do think I went through, a part of it because I had some pretty early success when I was 18, 19. Okay. I had a good run where through 18 till now, most of the groups have been successful. But I went back and I, and I, 
again, I thought about my dad and I thought about the fact that the guys who tutored me and the first guys I really started learning from, they were all in their 50s. Okay. And they'd been out of the game for a while, then they came back in. And this is my dad's old group. So they never once talked about all oh, the girls or, oh, man, they were, they're going to love this. Or they never once. All they talked about was, uh, you know, d- preparing the meal that, you know, of mm. the band. They, they lo- <laughs> it's like they were cooks and they loved cooking so much. They didn't even care if somebody enjoyed what they made. They just loved doing it. And I was surrounded for, you know, my formative years by these guys. And that's all they cared about. That's good. We love this. So then that's kind of how I feel. I love that. So if somebody is telling me I'm the greatest singer in the world, I, I take the sentiment, mm. the fact that they're saying something, that's great. But I don't actually listen to the words as much. You know, If it's someone musical and they have some technical cool things to say, that's neat because then it's, it's, it feels good and you can build on it. But yeah, I don't, you know, it's a weird thing. But I'd wonder if you'd, you're so grounded. But, but you're the lead singer, and typically the vocalists get the majority of the attention. Yes, but on many occasions, the guitarist can be the angriest person. <laughs> angriest <laughs> They're person. one step away from that lead singer <laughs> position. <laughs> I've never felt that. Yeah, so I, I've seen a lot of guitarists kind of like, oh, I'm so close, I'm right there, I should have this, you know? And it's yeah. funny because I'm the singer thinking, like, I, I've got it and I don't care, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. In fact, take some of it because on break, I'd rather not talk to everyone in the room sometimes. I want to just go sit down, you know? I'd leave. I'd like it. I'd like to be ignored <laughs> once in a while. Yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. I mean, yeah. yeah, I'm the guitarist, but you're right. As band leader, I'm the guy making all the announcements and right. and kind of running the show. But I'm also I, I've had conversations with all my singers. I I'm comfortable with them if they want to step up and and make this particular announcement or 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 take this responsibility. Um, yeah, I have no problem with that. You're a great front guy, though. I mean, your your on stage banter and everything is so good. Uh, but I don't. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, but I think again, as as the band leader, but guitarist, I try not to do too much of that because I want. I, I would like the focus to be on my vocalists. But yes, I guess as band leader, there are a few times during the show where where maybe you need to kind of be on the mic for a second or two. And, and you have some great front people anyway. That's you know? true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fortunate to be able to work with with uh, with, I, with great front people. I think, I think Lauren Dukes uh, has that gift for gab on that mic, and it's mm. very natural. And I like where she goes. You know, the, when I get to see her perform, it's it's interesting. It's 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 quick and it's good, and it reaches the people. And it seems very unique show to show, which I when I've seen her or worked with her, I, mm-hmm. so I enjoy that kind of kind of improv style. You know. Yeah, it's a great thing for someone to have, especially when you're the lead singer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of necessary. But yeah, I think the I think to close the book on that, I was starting to give you this analogy, and then I stopped because I wanted to bring it back up here. But okay. um, I think what I'm trying to tell anyone that reaches that level of success once once the attention is coming their way, I mean, I guess if that's what you're in it for, then good luck because I think it's it's a hole you'll never fill. I think it's it's the wrong reason to True. do this. But if that's what you're doing it for, hey, more power to you, you know. Eventually it goes away and you may still be able to gig without that. So, you know, or eventually you might be on stage with someone who gets it a little more. It's That's tricky to plant your fat flag on that hill, <laughs> you know. But Yeah, for me personally, it's just never been a component of performing for yeah. me. I, I've never, I, I'm more concerned with, uh, my gear and perform and 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 trying to play all the right notes. I, I've never really been uh, someone who's looking in the crowd for s- someone to spend some time with. That's that's not. <laughs> no, I, I'm more. <laughs> I'd rather have a sandwich. Or I like something, the way you, you worded know? someone in the crowd to no, spend some time with. Been... Man, you got to come out with a CD of love ballads, and that's the title of your CD. <laughs> well, that's a good title. Uh, someone in the crowd to spend some time with. <laughs> I can just do voiceover over your music. That's that's uh, I don't know. That's an yeah. '80s ballad, power ballad. <laughs> someone in the crowd. It's like, yeah, man. Uh, but I guess to, to the the last thing, I, if I were any of you performers out there that haven't felt that success yet, but then you will feel it. Just remember, you're great. But my advice is love the craft. And this is my analogy lately. I've been using this a lot lately. And you know, when they're cheering and they're screaming, and you're in a cover band. You know, be happy with the joy that you're bringing them. I love that. I love that people are feeling good and, and feeling happy. But but also just put it all in perspective. You have to be good enough to do it. But in the end, they they are they're cheering for 
sweet carol line they're cheering for don't stop believing you know like i'm i'm and again we have to be good enough to present that to them but let's you know not not lose sight of the fact i never lose sight of the fact um that that's what it's all about that that song you know if i'm at some festival and i've just performed all my originals and i know 80 percent of those people don't know those songs mm. and they stay then I feel like, okay, I think you're cheering for me because I wrote it, it's mine. But when we're doing the cover band thing, just enjoy the joy that we're giving people um, because when the pizza guy comes in my home, I- I'm, I'm really happy to see him. <laughs> but I think he knows that it's really all about the pizza. There you go. You know, and in the end, we're, we're delivering the pizza. So I'm finding that this also crosses over into, you, you hadn't mentioned this, but, well, you did off the top. I do voiceover work. And, and yes, there I are can't people, wait to get into this, uh, by the way. Well, sure. Um, somebody asked me recently, you know, can, can, about the money one can make doing this voiceover work. And, and I, I answered them as, as concisely as I could. But I wanted to impress upon them that I, I've never chased the dollar um, and, and much like being a musician, you have to, what you just said, the love of the craft, the love of the music, the love of performing. I do this voiceover work because I love it. And, and the fact that it is, is, is profitable for me or, or that I can earn anything, that's just almost kind of icing. I mean, sure, we all have bills and, uh, you know, we need, to, we need to finance our lifestyles. But if that's the reason you go into something, whether it's music or voiceover or art, if you go into it for the, the money, that it, it tends to not be as gratifying. And I find also that clients can, can tell the difference. I want to so. delve into this now. I'm so glad you brought it up, though, because that, that we have to survive. And, and if you can figure out what you love and then do that yes. and then make a living out of it, score. And yeah. if you can't, you know, I think we should all still keep trying to do That's what hobbies are for, and it's great, you know. True. But but you specifically, this is what's great and fascinating and impressive. You every, Everything that you've loved, you've really excelled at, so you've been able to make a living at it. This voiceover thing, um, you've decided now to not stop being a band member. You're a band member, but you've decided to not be a band leader. Now step back from that position, which you've excelled at for so many years, and you've gone into the voiceover business to still still doing the band thing but now this voiceover thing how, how did that all come about and folks he's where, where can they where can they hear your stuff where, oh sure so yes. my website is uh, domingo d-o-m-i-n-g-o voiceover v-o-i-c-e O-V-E-R dot com. So, and you can hear all my stuff there. Folks, Domingo Voiceover. <laughs> Thanks. Go to it. Domingo Voiceover dot com. You will hear, you will be so impressed. Or you could, I've got a YouTube channel too, which is also Domingo Voiceover. But, Great. Um, yeah. <laughs> go, go to them all. And I'm, I, I'm telling you, you're going to be amused because you've heard him speak. And you heard some voiceover stuff at the beginning, but wait till you guys hear this. And I want to get into this first. Sure. Your reasoning. Yeah. You just, how did you, how did you bounce into the voiceover thing? So, what what I, happened? I don't know if there's reasoning involved. I mean, again, I, I was working in radio since my mid twenties. Uh, so that's over half my life ago, or maybe about half my life ago. And, and working at the station for nearly 20 years, that was great. You do all kinds of commercials and, you know, initially I didn't even want to be on the air. I just love doing production. Uh, the great thing about production is if you screw up you could go back and cut it out um but eventually they had asked me to host my own time slot as well on the station and and surprise i i enjoyed doing that as well but again the radio station went away this was back in 2009 that it flipped format so 10 years ago and i had missed doing that kind of work i had missed recording commercials and and recording my voice. So I just, about three and a half years ago, I started kind of working on my own and freelancing. Uh, and, and not out of any financial need, just because I felt that this was a skill set that I had that I really hadn't used in years. So yeah, I've been freelancing for about three and a half years, and I love it. And what's unique is I found a, a f- good amount of success at, at doing this. Um, I, I work out of my home now. In they are not to, a sponsor, but you got to, even the way you found it, you used the website at first. Who was it? Yeah, there's a freelancing website that I found called Fiverr, F I V E R R dot uh-huh. com. And it's, it's, it, people have their different opinions of it. And there, there's, but there's more than one website that you can join. There are also these play, pay to play voiceover sites that I've been uh, a member of. So describe of. these sites. How do they work? You get on and. Sure. You're, you're basically, uh, you could say, like a hired gun. Uh, you sell your digital service and what i mean by digital service is something that can be transmitted 
uh, through email, through the computer. So maybe you offer a Photoshop service or maybe you do a resume service. And uh, when you first jumped in, did you, you, you jumped in, did you create some demos for yourself? Yeah, first? you have to. Well, I, I, I already did have demos from, uh, that were kind of dated back, but, uh, Yes, you need to uh, show potential clients what what you can do. Mm-hmm. Much like with your own music, you would give someone a demo. Uh, with your, with voiceover, you have to have some kind of sample of what you sound like. Did you have um, kind of one track with different examples, or did you have like multiple tracks, and they just got to sample different tracks? You know? Yeah, it's best to have one uh, concise track with different examples, and and, okay. and at least no longer than than a minute, and maybe even shorter sometimes, just just to show what you can do. Totally produced. You had music back behind you. And yeah, it helps. It sounded have, like a commercial. You're right. You yeah. have to have some production quality to okay. it. So so yes, put some music and sound effects behind okay. it. So you're armed with that. You go to the sites or site, and you you put that on there, and whatever else you need for your online bio or whatever with this. Tinder job site. <laughs> That's what it is. Swipe. Yeah. Um, so then, and swipe then, right. and then, what happens? Uh, you just build it slowly, mm-hmm. and, and like anything, it, it, you know, sometimes, boy, this isn't going anywhere, and then sometimes it's just trickling. But there is the phrase that a little by little, a little becomes a lot. And I've been working freelance for three and a half years now, and um, he, I, so again, I had mentioned before, I'm 50, and I, I don't know how much more rocking and rolling there is for me. I mean, I love playing <laughs> guitar, but you know, we did a gig recently where we played till 2:30 in the morning, and on top of that, it's it's a 90 minute drive home for me, and so to walk in at 4:30 in the morning is a little rough for someone of my age. So so I don't. I mean, but that's not every gig. I still love playing, and I still appreciate it. But yeah. am I going to be doing that 10 years from now? I, I don't, not likely, uh, but voiceover work, I, I truly love doing this work, whether it's commercial or, or animation or narration. Do you remember the first gig you got on the site? Um, I do. It was a narration. It was, it was, uh, it was an, 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 an art exhibit and I can't remember exactly what the script was, but it was the kind of thing where you step up and and the voiceover tells you about this bridge in Montana that was built in the 1800s. Do you remember the tone that you had to use for that particular piece? It had to be informative and educational and maybe not too dry. It wasn't. It certainly wasn't comedic. I, I, it was some kind of educational thing. I, I'll have to dig it up. But yes, it, it was. It was just kind of direct and to the point and informative. When you're creating your voiceover demo, do, do you already have how, how many different vibes? did you have on it how many different sort of let's call them personalities yeah did you showcase how, yeah. how and how vastly different were they so i guess you need to figure out what maybe a starting point whether you want to be in commercial work that's probably the best place to start and so uh, find some products and and make some scripts or borrow a few lines from scripts and put something together 60 seconds worth of five different products or scripts and put five different music beds under there oops so they all sound different and and have one excited and one mellow and i don't know if you're i don't want to put you on the spot uh, but if you're able to show any examples or phrasings or i don't know while while you describe them because i'm really curious about this yeah so so uh, something more up tempo maybe if it's it's for um like an energy drink or maybe it's for a chevy ad you know you want some excitement there but then also if you're doing a psa for some kind of uh health thing you certainly don't want to be super excited you want to have an appropriate amount of energy when you're doing that um so it's it's just it depends on what the 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 product is and what the client uh what the script calls for Uh if you're doing like a you know they're they're saying okay this is an athletic thing it's for a college crowd you know, you know, you're going to talk to us about fizz drink, the fizzy drink that gives, you know gives you a lift. Like, what is your tone? Like, right off the bat, where would you have to go with that? Yeah. Right. So here's three examples. You yeah. know, there's the regular guy, the fizzy drink that gives you energy. That's just kind of regular maybe, guy. Yeah. Well, maybe I don't know. Maybe that's a little more hyped. But I did a script yesterday for a client that I've been working with for nearly two years. It's an automotive thing, and they want, they love the big, you know, the fizzy drink that gives you energy. <laughs> they they love that big <laughs> Sunday Sunday yeah. kind of yeah yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 and it works because you put the aggressive music behind it, and yeah. then but then sometimes you want something more the fizzy drink that gives you energy. Right, my God, this is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, this is you. You have the vocal chops for it. 
but it is a talent. And that's why I wanted you to, to try to you know show us examples as we talk through them because there's a mindset and there's a tone, you know, the whole thing. I, I, I heard you doing, uh, it's funny because I was, I was buying, buying a new car and then I saw a commercial for that car on your site and Subaru, you, you were the vice, you were Subaru. the voice. I'm like, I'm buying this tomorrow, <laughs> you know, but it was funny. But then there was another one where it was kind of a man owning a farm and he's oh, talking, yeah. and you know, you were supposed to be the voice of the man that they were showing and it didn't even sound like you. It sounded like this, you know. Midwestern farmer kind of thing. You sure. Know? So a, a big uh, key word in, in voiceover is authenticity. They they want people to sound. Sa- I mean, certainly you want the commercial sound for when this it's appropriate to the script. So bigger is bigger when they need it. Right. But yeah. often, it, so here in the States, what they want is um, authenticity and real. You'll notice that a lot of voiceover work these days isn't from when we were kids, you know, Mattel, summer assembly required, you know, that's, yeah. it, that still exists. But these days, if if you watch the Subaru commercial, it's a regular sounding person. And the, the thing about Subaru is I think their tagline is um, Subaru made with love. You know, a car made with love, you know, okay, that's where we're at. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a regular, going. it's a regular person. And, and so <laughs> that script that you're talking about, yeah. um, uh, I forget uh, Midwest farmer or third generation farmer is what you're talking about. That, that was a wonderful challenge because you have to, I, I had to get out of the mindset of I'm, I'm a salesperson, I'm selling something. I had to put my mind in, in, in the mentality of okay i'm this farmer i am the third generation person working on this and and it took a while but i'm really proud Did it of take that a while ter- because it was what was fascinating about that one in particular is that everything else was yeah it was different dynamics and right. it was different voices and and you were selling and it was the perfect pitch for what was needed i mean you're you're really great at this man oh, and, and but when i heard that that piece in particular, I thought, oh, th- he's acting right now. He's not doing a sales pitch. He's a character reading a script. It was totally different. And I know I, in some ways they all are little characters. But oftentimes, I think um, with the exception of you know something that's super authentic, there's still always going to be this slight turn and slight tone and slight infe- inflection to a lot of these things that aren't exactly the way people speak <laughs> when they're no, having right. coffee. But that particular piece was an acting piece that's why they call it voice acting uh and 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 i don't say that as to say uh look at me i am a voice actor. well they can't see you they could just hear you (laughs) listen to me (laughs) but yes i'm especially proud of that one i feel like i did a good job and 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 i'm going to continue learning and um but whatever came your way would you do like like an animate like an actual character in, in a film like animated film or something i've, like I've that. done some animation work oh um, really and not anything necessarily that uh, the average person would would know of but but absolutely it's it's all a challenge it's all fun uh i was i, I got to play a father recently um <laughs> uh and i can't i can't think of uh, to answer your question, absolutely. Um, yeah. The animation work is, is when people think of voiceover, you, you take for granted that animation, there's a, it's an entire field of voiceover work that people don't consider. Um, another one more recently that I'm uh, kind of trying to get my hands into and more involved or more work with is um, uh, trailer work. Uh, movie trailer work. You were so good at that. Uh, the, you, the guy that, do you remember the name of the, the super famous guy, the inner world guy? Like he was, he was yeah. the guy who, I don't know if he's still alive. I thought we lost him recently. We, we did. That's Don, Don LaFontaine. And I thought I saw either a documentary or like a 60 minute piece on him and it showed his whole day yes. going from limo to limo to limo, you know, riding yes. studios. In I his, saw that. Did you see it? It's yes. fascinating. But when he, when I found out that he passed away, I imagine everyone's looking for that because he nailed it and you have that same sound. Uh, it's it's fantastic. You know? So there is, a, there is a market for that sound. The, that, in a that world big, guy. In, in a world, world where one man does a podcast from his home <laughs> on the second floor of a building where there's one dog who's now sleeping <laughs> and one guest who wears black all the time. <laughs> One man, two men, two mics, two coffees, one bathroom. Coming soon. <laughs> yeah. So there's 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 that voice. <laughs> oh, I, I go see that movie, man. That's an independent movie. Uh, well. Netflix, call us. Okay. So there's there's that affected voice, and there's a market for that. But people also forget. <laughs> 
<laughs> there you go. Oh man! In in trailer work, <laughs> there's also voices that aren't aren't quite so big. I mean, there's there's like the friends and family guy. Okay, uh, you know, like there, a lot of this Disney work that's coming out. You know, onward May fifteenth, or. Uh, uh, Mulan in theaters now. Yeah. You know, this is not necessarily as big, but there's but, that tone that we all yes. want. Uh, yeah, and and that's another character that I'm just kind of working to develop. And man, it's it's a lot of fun. And I, and again, to kind of circle back on on what we spoke about before, we we do these things. You and I do these things because. We, we have a love for the craft. Yeah. We're not millionaires. We're not motivated by money. And certainly if it paid well, yeah, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to voice that script. But the, oftentimes I'm having so much fun, I would, I would do this for free. Wow. So I remember telling, a, 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 this goes back about 20 years ago, I was playing in a different band and I was just the singer. I, I don't mean to say just the singer. He was the band leader. I was the singer. And okay. it was so much fun. And I remember I told him, man, this was, so, I would do this for free. This was such a great time. And, and I remember he told me, don't keep saying that because I, you know, he's tempted to not pay me. <laughs> that goes into a sidebar of, yeah, that, it's, it's interesting when you're doing music or doing the arts or doing something you love, it, it becomes very easy to at first underprice yourself mm. because you're, it, it did feel weird to you, like um, in the beginning of the, the music world, kind of, I, I don't know, I guess this much. You know, uh, <laughs> you're right. Yes, yes. You're gonna pay me, okay? I did some stuff in a piano bar, and I they were they were probably making you know whatever they paid me inside of three drink sales, mm. and I just loved it so much. And I and I didn't know, but that was you know it, t- it takes a while. But you're right. You had to do that in the voiceover thing, at least for your case. For your case, it served you right because you started out. I think you mentioned something like you know five bucks a gig, something like relatively cheap, or I couldn't remember the figure exactly. You start, you are for so for this particular uh, freelance site you're speaking of. Yes, you do start off undervalued, and and it's because you have to kind of build your credibility, and then you get to a point once you've developed your social proof that you can start demanding i shouldn't say demanding you should start you can start um charging what you're worth closer to How what did you're that worth work for you you because you you start off was it it was as low as that like yes. under 10 bucks it was yes. okay so then you're you're putting yourself out there and then a couple of offers come in and then you're doing them you know sure. it does help that um you know people learn production because you're very good in the production world as well that helps you know, you're that, right it does help but i mean you start off and then it's trickling in. So then at what point do you decide, okay, it's time to charge a little bit more? And I, I don't mean the, the jump. I mean the first mm-hmm. increase. How did you decide? Yeah. So with these sites, you, um, you earn reviews and, and people can see your reviews. And, and so maybe you've, you, you're a seller and you come out and you've got zero v- reviews. Well, you're not going to be able to charge a premium for your services when you have no proof that You've got your demo, and that's great. Yeah. But th- there is no proof that people have have worked with you before. So, uh, but to answer your question, I think once you get to around 100, 200, 300 reviews, then you have the credibility to you know what I'm I'm going to start charging more. I'm going to start, uh, a- and and you're worth it because now you have proof that you have earned that point. You know you have you have worked to that level. And unfortunately, a lot of people get frustrated and don't even get to that level. And and maybe it's. I mean, maybe that wasn't the path for them. But in my case, uh, yes, I was undervalued as I began, Mm -hmm. uh, but I was loving the work and I was also learning. And I listened to some of my early deliveries and I think, oh, well, I think my quality still needed a little bit of tweaking back then. And and I'm still learning. But, But now I'm at the point where I can make a living at this. And I'm not just on one site. I, I actually now have, uh, I, I, I earn uh, uh, money on, on these different uh, freelance sites, but mm-hmm. I also have clients who work with me directly now who find me through my YouTube channel or through Google search oh, or fr- from my website. And, and, and that is, has now become a, a substantial uh, income. And so, I, again, a little, this is something that my wife taught me, actually. A little by little, a little becomes a lot. And, and just like if you're training for a marathon, you know, okay, today you're just going to run half a mile and tomorrow a whole mile. And you in, incrementally grow this. And um, there's a book called the, um, uh, the, the Slight Edge, The Slight Edge. And it talks about how if every day you kind of chip at it just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, well, a year has gone by and now look, look at how much you've accomplished. So yeah, there's just the mindset of keep going at it. And if you love it, it helps because it doesn't even feel like work. So you're having fun. I, I love this work. I can see myself doing this work until I'm 
I, until for whatever reason, I don't have the ability to do it anymore. And, and what's cool is somebody can probably take this as far as they like, similar to playing an instrument or something. I noticed that, you know, I saw one video, I can't remember if you shared it with me or maybe you put it on social media, but you mm -hmm. were getting a lesson. You were, you were, I think it oh, was yeah. you and like four other students or something like that. Yes. But I mean, you were taking a course and he was really being meticulous about these fine points of how you delivered and how you did it. And so you, you've even dove into that to just, further hone the craft of this sure so the video how much has that helped oh it, it's 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 very helpful so the video that you're referring to is is on my uh youtube channel and you can you can even watch it for yourself so this particular uh, workshop was myself and i think nine other students and it was with an instructor who has a lot of experience in in uh in movie trailer work mm -hmm. in voiceover work um there was a cbs um show uh, recently that he, he he was the voiceover for um and, and forgive me i forget what it's called but he he would do the the little commercials for it and and it, he's the voice i hear on tv and and so he he's very gifted at, at not only this performing a voiceover but he's a great instructor as well and so yes he was giving us specific direction and and trying to kind of help us uh uh, along the way there. So. so how many different avenues of education did you put yourself through? Were there, was there reading? Were there YouTube videos that you watched? Or was it mainly this, this course? And Yeah, different avenues. I mean, I, I try and absorb as much as I can. I mean, w when you're, you know, you can, you can listen to podcasts. You can listen to voiceover people who have uh, books on, on Audible that you can listen to. But, but YouTube is probably the biggest thing. I mean, you just type in voiceover, and there are a lot of great people on there who you could learn something from. Um, I don't necessarily agree with all these voiceover people who pop up. Maybe I think, oh, I don't. Yeah. There is something to learn from everybody, even if it's don't do what this guy's doing. <laughs> That's even, clever. Even yeah, if, yeah. So, so smart. Yeah. yeah and, and so he, the, YouTube is, is amazing. And so even with my video production that I'm just starting to learn, I'm teaching myself how to use this Adobe Premiere Pro video uh, program that I, I didn't know how to use, but I go on YouTube and I type how to blah, 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 how to make text appear. And I teach it to myself. And, and then I'm, I'm learning how to do stuff. I mean, you could literally go on YouTube and and there are videos on how to be a voice actor, how to develop your voice. And I bet you there's something on there that, that, that you could learn. Wow, and that's so, cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, kudos to you, man. It's, it's, I think it's very cool, and, and it's, it's showing on the success level. And you were just working with a professional, because when, when you were so gracious to um, have your talent be put on the, the Strange You, Strange Me podcast, uh -huh. I, I knew exactly what I wanted. I, I, I love, I'm a personal fan of that huge movie in a world voice yeah. <laughs> saying something silly and, and having a, the silly kind of tone, but still having, you know, just the gravity of that voice. Sure. And you nailed it the first time. Like, it was just so great. I think, I don't know if you gave me three takes or something I think to I choose from, yes. but I just, the first time I heard it, I, I, I was laughing. I, I played it in, just in my car. You sent it as a message, and I, um, I was laughing. That's right. <laughs> I, was, I texted it to you. <laughs> yeah, I was laughing gleefully because oh, good. It was, you nailed it so much. And it's, it's, it, listen, if you guys don't listen to both podcasts, check out the Strange You, Strange Me podcast mm. for the intro alone That's and me. the outro. That's me. Yeah, and, and it's, <laughs> it's just, it, it's, it was impressive. It was impressive because I hadn't worked with you in that realm and I really felt like, okay, I just worked with a pro. Oh, thanks. You know, yeah, that's, I guess the irony, you and I have known each other as band leaders and, and circle around it, circling our, our, yeah. our circles in common for over a dozen years, yet you've never been a voiceover client of mine until, right. <laughs> until recently. <laughs> so. And so I'm glad you experienced that. And, and yeah, I, and I know that as a client, you know this, I, I love this work. You can tell people how much I asked, uh, how much you paid me. I told... I, I, I said I would do this for free because I love this work. Now that doesn't mean I'm going to work for free, but in case, <laughs> in the case of you and I who've known each other for over a decade, um, I'm, I'm glad to help. And and yeah, it, it, when you love what you do, no matter what it is, uh, it, it it shows in your effort. It yeah. shows in the results. And if you have clients, uh, clients can tell as well. And you're happier. And and ultimately, so what I was taught is go for what you love, and the money will follow. So you, not only will you be happier, but you'll, you'll put more into it 
and and then clients will notice and like, oh, here's here's an extra hundred percent tip for your what? You know, I, I've <laughs> seen that before. You know, and and on top of that, it's work that I love doing. So find something that you love doing, and there and 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 work at that. Even if you can devote five minutes a day at it, because again, a little by little, it all adds up. Um, Look on these freelance websites uh, where you can sell your services. If it's if it's a skill that you have that involves the computer, you could possibly sell that service online. And you know, with the way things are going with uh, the current state of uh, health and epidemic and things yeah. like that, I mean, it is affecting our 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 gigs, uh, our clients, um, because the whole right. idea of hey, let's all let's six hundred people, let's all get together. That is becoming questionable now. They don't right. want to do that. As, for- as soon as there's anything like the like the coronavirus, or as soon as something like that comes into play, our business can definitely become affected in that. Yeah. Sure, I, I have I seen just lost a whole month's worth of travel shows. Okay, uh, great. Yeah, to- yeah. Well, not great, but to <laughs> to, to that point, we're we're seeing yeah. that. But but I have to be careful in saying this. My I I am not seeing it with my voiceover work. Of I, course. Um, because well, more people are staying home to watch TV. Uh, <laughs> sure, and, or they they need me to say in a world where people work from home in their pajamas and never leave. Showers are optional. <laughs> it's the best so, job ever. Well, I, I and I love doing this. I love. I mean, I, I, you and I will wrap up today. I'm going to go home and, and keep doing voiceover work. Yeah, and and I do it from home. My wife and I can take breaks and watch TV and have lunch and get back to work. And it helps that you you love what you do. There's an uh, just being around you, and we've we've had you know you know you and I don't hang out weekly, but we'll have these conversations that usually are stemmed from oh we should talk about this because of the 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 world that we both work you know the company we work for and mm-hmm. we have you know crossover uh, things that we need to discuss, uh, but then somehow it's just this past year especially uh, there's there's been this kind of little friendship that has grown that I'm really pleased with. And I, I, actually years ago, I think when I was having one of my lowest points, just mm. be, fe- being beat down from the business, you know, you, you were one of the people, you know, I, we, we were talking about regular work stuff and then you actually pulled me out of a rut. And, you know, I don't know if you even knew it, but you were just kind. I was getting beat down from the clients and the workload and you'd mentioned something. You said, well, you know, I'm, I'm the guitarist, so I have to deal with these clients, and it's crazy. And then when the show starts, I can take at least a few steps back. And you're a band leader who has to deal with the clients, and then all of a sudden you have to be the guy in the middle of the stage saying, hey, here we go, you know. And somehow you put it in a better way. You put it in perspective, but it brought me up. And there's just many things about you that are uh, professionally and personally a gift. And it, it's really it, it's 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 really an honor to know somebody like you. You have a good heart, and... What makes me very happy, knowing you professionally and a little bit personally, there's been a presentation you've always had. You've always had this presentation of, hey, it's going to be okay, everything's all right. Mm -hmm. And I like that because that's that's how you get things done in, in this kind of world or in any professional world, you know, but there's a certain peacefulness and a certain happiness that I'm seeing from you over the last half year or so that I've never seen. Oh. And it's really enjoyable. And I love where you've taken your life. And I, I love the peacefulness that you seem to be finding for yourself and, you know, be peppered with success. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm, I couldn't be happier for you. I think you're very deserving. Well, and, thank you. And, and really pleased to know you. There, man, there are so. two things that come to mind. And, and first, you know, along my path i have been helped by the, the the efforts and guidance of people who've who've taken the time to 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 teach me and and show me when they they there was nothing in it for them to do that i mean you have had mentors obviously your father is great yeah. musical mentor for you uh my own father kind of taught me just kind of you know mellow out you know don't be so upset about things and and so along our path along my path i've i've been fortunate to have the guidance of of these people and so I feel like I can give back and it, it's, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm grateful. And so that's the second part of it. I, I'm, I'm getting better at seeing all the different ways that I should be grateful for things. I was in a motorcycle accident, I think in 1996, I was 26 years old. Hmm. Uh, I wasn't wearing my helmet. I landed on my face and uh, on my face and on my hand. And um, so I, I, I had never broken a bone in my body ever. Uh, but I was 26 
and I, I broke my nose and I, and I landed on my hand and I broke two bones in my hand and you can see the scar on my hand here wow. and the scar on my head because I hit the ground. Um, and oh, I had also 26 stitches on the inside of my mouth because my teeth went into my mouth, oh. but luckily not through. Um, so if, if, if you understand motorcycle accidents, a lot of the times when you are in a motorcycle accident, the bike falls and you mess up your leg. Uh, lucky for me, I didn't mess up my leg. I was kind of ejected and went forward. And lucky for me, I landed the way I did. But I, I should be a lot more damaged and injured than I, uh, than I was. Uh-huh. Uh, I should have some kind of brain stuff going, or maybe I do. Um, but I, I, I don't. And I, I, I look at that and I think, wow, I, I'm so fortunate that I walked away from that. I, I have a friend who... I. I He's since passed, but when I when I knew him, he was he, he always walked with a limp, and and it's because he, when he was younger, he was in a motorcycle accident, wow. and so there are all these different ways that we are all fortunate and and gifted, and I think if we could start looking at ways that we are are fortunate and and start looking at the positive, we develop this level of gratitude. We wake up and we think, wow, I'm I'm here. I have my hearing. I make a living through my hearing. You do too. Yeah. Uh, I, I still I, I have a little bit of ringing sometimes, and I know that one ear hears better than the other, but I still have my hearing, and I can still go in my voiceover studio, and I can record things, and I'm <laughs> grateful. So, um, yeah, I, I feel like I just wow. this attitude of gratitude has helped me, and that's the path that I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> well, I'm happy for you, man. So, you've do, you've done the podcast. How do you feel? Is it good enough? Yeah, yeah. Not I, too bad. Is it okay for me to put my clothes back on? <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <laughs> good stuff, man. Yeah. And what did we walk away with? I think sometimes you have to, you know, forget about falling and landing on your feet. I think sometimes you have to land on your face. Oh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys t- 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 forget <laughs> about landing on your feet. Sometimes it's about landing on your face. <laughs> and with that, I'm Robbie Celestin. I'm Kelly. Domingo Castillo. <laughs> It's been a treat, oh, man. Yeah. Folks, nice. uh, find them again. So, DomingoVoiceOver.com, yes, correct? Sir. That's and then correct. Domingo VoiceOver on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on YouTube. Uh, I'm not really on Facebook, but you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm trying to build my presence there as well. Um, but reach out if I can be of help or if you found this entertaining. Yes, um, please. Yeah, and it, Robbie's podcast too. Yes, uh, please. Strange sure. you, strange me, <laughs> man. You're, you are the voice of that podcast. And this one as well. <laughs> and this one as well. <laughs> Folks, uh, whether you need work from him or not go to the websites because oh, it's just you. entertaining i was entertained <laughs> too and, and it's just cool it's it's almost like you know now they've heard your story they should definitely check out your stuff so thanks again for doing this man thank uh, you greatly appreciate it. and thank you for your guidance and your, lending your talent uh, as well to the podcast world so there you go folks you did if you didn't know him before well now you know him now you probably love him to death so <laughs> have a great month have a great day have a great week go out and find your smile in a world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I that did was it. great. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, boy. Welcome to my life so far. You'd think by now I'd be a star. I may be long-winded, but hey, there's just so much I have to say. Maybe lick your lips when you're hungry Maybe drop your head when you're sorry Maybe shake a bit when you're worried That's just